I'm going to start with a question. What happens at five in the morning? What happens at five in the morning in Iran? We're here together tonight to have a beautiful evening and to celebrate art and freedom. Some of you may know that at Samana we know how to throw a party, as you can see. Um, and as you can also expect from us, we have a mission as well and a story to tell. It was five in the morning. And she found herself in the classroom of a primary school. It was the end of the summer of 79 in Avaz, the south of Iran. Now, she wasn't an eight- or nine-year-old student there, no. She was 25 years old when she was arrested and taken prisoner for what she believed about freedom and democracy. It was seven months after the revolution, and she'd been actively fighting for equal rights. But the happiness for this long-desired change, it didn't last long, and was soon replaced by something else. Naturally, the first victims were women. They quickly saw their freedom and their rights taken away, and so again they raised their voices in protest. They could not be silent. But the fist of the new regime was hard. Massive arrests, fast and short processes, and death penalties. There weren't enough prisons for all of those who were arrested. And so, that summer, she found herself held in a school, which they had turned into a prison, with the exams room functioning as a court. Every night, at 10 p.m., the processes would start, followed by death penalties, executions, at one in the morning. She would lay awake and count the people killed. Will I be next? When? It was five in the morning, and the gunshots had ended, and soon they would come and get the prisoners and take them to the bathrooms. She knew what was coming. You see, the school had a courtyard with trees, and to get to the bathrooms, they had to cross the courtyard along the trees. The trees were only hours earlier. The prisoners were bound and shot. And she would look at the trees, and their red stems, soaked in fresh blood, filled with holes, and she would think, how can these trees still be alive? And she, this routine would continue for the months that she was held there, and after a while, she realized why this old Persian song is loved by so many. Ashune, Javanane, Vatan, Lale Damide. You know it. <laughs> From the blood of the youth of the land, the tulips have grown. This is part of the life story from one of my dear colleagues. She doesn't want to be named, but she's been with Samana for a very long time. And everyone who has joined Samana after her has a story like hers. Whether it is from the executions in the 80s, the Green Movement in 2009, or part of the most recent uprisings just months ago. Please allow me to tell you a little bit more about my colleagues. While most of them, they didn't come to Europe to study. They didn't have a visa in their passport. Some were forced to travel with human traffickers. Most of them spent quite some time in centers for asylum seekers. But they have something really special. They are rich in talent. They are driven. They are part of our Zamane family. They are resilient. 
The Samana family all over the world is a group of crazy, brave journalists. They are writers, they are artists, musicians, poets and intellectuals. And all of them are storytellers. We are all driven by the same belief, the belief in the strong power of independent media, the power of media and storytelling to expose the truth, to create dialogue, to inspire critical thinking. The project we are presenting to you tonight is a magnificent short film created by Mustafa Heravi, featuring some of the top storytellers in our field. They have sometimes gone beyond what seems even humanly possible to tell their story and to make noise. Tonight, we are making noise in support of due process and fair trial in Iran. By coming here tonight, by buying a ticket, you are all supporting all of the storytellers in our network. And in name of them, I would like to say thank you.